Bargain Jules fans, welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV. It is the penultimate match preview show of the season as this Saturday Gillingham hosts Newport County. A game between two sides will have nothing riding on it other than pride. Um, and I'm pleased to say that head of the game, I'm joined by Newport fan Kieran. You can find him on Twitter at Kieran UTC. I will put his Twitter handle in the description at the bottom of the video. So go and give him a follow. Kieran, number one, hope you're well. And number two, thanks for joining me this evening to have a chat ahead of the game. Yeah, I mean, thanks for inviting me, man. I'm doing no. well. No problem at all. Good, good, good. Right, we'll crack straight on then. Let's have a look at, at recent form for both clubs. Over the last six, Jills have picked up eight points from 18 available. That's two wins, two draws and two defeats. Newport, one point better over the same period. Nine points from the last half dozen games. But pretty erratic, I think, is the best way to describe it. That's three wins and three losses. And if we break it down even further into home and away, um, Jills' last, home, uh, last six on their own patch has yielded 16 points from a possible 18. They've only dropped points against Stockport in the last half a dozen. There's five wins in that run. I think it's nine from 11 since the takeover at the Priestfield. And uh, Newport County will have their work cut out. But they've taken eight points from 18 on the road, and that is a pair of wins, a pair of draws, and a pair of defeats. Um, I used the word erratic, Kieran, about your recent form. I was looking at it. Um, obviously, three wins and three losses means that it's, it's, it's a bit up and down. If you look at the pattern... You do a double you on Saturday, which obviously I'm hoping isn't correct, and you're hoping is. Um, but you, you beat not you beat Northampton Town recently three 0 absolutely um, smashed them off the park. I know they had injuries, um, and they beat us shortly after two one. But then to flip it the other way and back to that erratic comment that I made right at the top of the show, you then went and got absolutely annihilated four 0 by Stockport, who we was a couple of minutes away from beating just just about a week and a half ago. So, what do you put that down to? Is that just is that Graham Cochrane trying things now because the season's essentially dead, so you can have a look at an experiment? Because you've scored 11 in that time, but you conceded 10. So it says to me goals at the weekend. I mean, expecting goals, definitely. It's We've been experimenting not as much with players because we haven't got the uh, biggest depth in terms of a squad at the minute, mm -hmm. but we're more experimenting with different ways of play, like tactic-wise. We've swapped to a... Uh, from passing to high press to near enough whatever you can imagine for a footballer strategy. So it's so frustrating at times because the Northampton game I watched and I was like, what? I wasn't expecting it. I mean, not many people are expecting a team bottom of mid table to beat a promotion contending team, right? And then we go on and get absolutely pummeled by Stockport. And I'm like, I understand the we're experimenting things, and that's definitely why our form has stagnated to the exact definition. But mm -hmm. it's frustrating to go from win loss, win loss, because I get my hopes up and then lose them immediately. It's uh, it's not very fun. No, I can imagine it is a little bit frustrating, but I suppose it's the time of the season to be doing it. You wouldn't want to be doing that when when it matters a little bit more, other than just like pride and players potentially playing to earn contracts and that type of thing. Um. The other side is obviously Jules, and, and we've been really good in, in recent weeks in terms of the big teams that we've had to play. The last four, we've had to play Northampton, Stockport, Leighton Orient and Bradford, all teams that are looking to try and get promoted by one way or another. I know Leighton Orient have, because they did it on our own pitch at the same time as us um, confirming our safety. But yeah, I think we was only one screamer uh, at Northampton away from being unbeaten in them four games, and it's only a couple of weeks before that as well that we beat Carlisle 1-0. They were third when we kicked off that game. So that was the last thing I think that was being sort of levelled at Neil Harris. Could he start getting points against the sides right up the top? And we've started to do that in recent weeks. It doesn't mean that next season we'll automatically be up there ourselves. There's still lots of improvements, but there's certainly signs that we've continued to go in the right direction after getting ourselves a well from safety. And it's I said on our Monday review show last weekend that it's crazy to think that with two games to go, we can actually still get into the top half after scoring six goals in our first 23 league games. But enough about us. Obviously, we want to find out about, about Newport County, the manager, the team, the setup. Um, Graham Cochran was appointed 22nd of October, I think, if I've done my research correctly. Um, and you are, right? Uh, 20th, our first game's on the 22nd. Right, OK. Close enough. <laughs> I mean, you're not, you're not far off. I think I worked it out that you played 29 games with him in charge. This is just in the league. You've won nine, drawn 12 and lost eight. So in terms of not getting beat, that, that's a good sign. You've become hard to beat. 
obviously there's a lot of draws in there as well, which which indicates why you where you are at the moment. Um, one point three four points per game over that period, which is is mid table form. Um, how has he done though? What's what's the reaction been? Firstly, initially when he first came in, and and obviously now that he's had a good portion of the season to to put his stamp on things, has he has he done a good job? And 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 what's the aspirations then going to be for for next season? It, it, it's really nice that you're asking that question because my past week or two has been surging into this. Uh, the original like overview when he came in was. It's good because he had lower league experience at Bristol Rovers Mansfield mm-hmm. previously, but his records at both clubs weren't great at all. There was controversy when he left uh, Bristol for Mansfield and whatever, but that's behind us now. My overall opinion has been, while he's been here, we found a way of form that works, mm-hmm. and we're still experimenting with certain things, but... It's a situation where I have a I have a strong feeling that if we play the it's kind of a it, it's confusing to say it's a like high tempo passing game, but we're pretty good at dropping back, switching the play. So if we play how I feel we can play under him, I feel next season we could go for a I I I don't want to say playoffs, I wanna to say top half because I don't mm-hmm. want to be too optimistic, but no, he's been, he's found us a run of form that steered us clear of relegation. Mm-hmm. He's really sorted us out in terms of making the players work hard, which is the one thing he did say when he originally joined, is that he wanted uh, the players to work hard, which, like I said, he's he's done to a T. Um, yep. Saving us from relegation was the main point when he was first appointed. We did that just after the Hartlepool game. The, a loss to Mansfield was the game that solidified us staying up. Um, no, over, to answer your question overall, he's done, he, he's been consistent in getting a team that's hard to beat, experimenting as men. We've lost points, certain players in the team not performing to a extent that we would have fought as men. We've lost points, but overall, he's done a very decent job and within, like I said, the next season, I would not mind if we just have a good window under him, get another mid-table finish, and then I'm thinking season after is where we can kind of think maybe playoffs. But no, he's he's been a good manager so far. Fair enough, yeah. And it's a sensible approach as well because you see managers come in all too often and, and they do all right and then everyone goes, oh, now we've got to get in the playoffs and we've got to get automatic promotion. And that's that's been the same with, with our team. And it's just a case of trying to temper that because there's going to be good sides in the division. When there's going to be good sides that miss out in the playoffs, there's going to be there's certainly one good side coming up from the National League that we know all about already. There's going to be teams that, you know, might be decent for the level coming out of League One. So it was interesting to hear you say just, you know, another season of, of building steadily. So I suppose turning some of them draws into wins does that. And then, like you say, you become a top 10 or a top 12 side and then you can look at becoming a top eight or a top six side. Um, but we all know managers tend not to get that long these days, unfortunately, do they? Um, one player I want to talk about, because purely because I think we was linked to him loosely in the January transfer window after being taken over just before Christmas, and that's your top scorer, um, is Omar Bogle. And I've written down Enigma, and I think that's, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's probably quite a fair way to sum up Omar Bogle throughout his career, not just at Newport. When I was looking at his runs of games just with you this season, he scored nine in his first 21. Then he scored two in 25 and they came in the same game. He's now gone and got five in his last six. So 16 goals in all competitions, you can't you can't moan at that at all. It's, it's a good return for someone that I think you got on a free transfer, correct? I'd like to say so, yeah. So you can't moan at that at all, but obviously there's just these massive gaps where he doesn't score for, for long periods of time. How has Bogle been? Because he's always, I think when he first burst on the scene years ago, I think it was at Grimsby, um, he became very highly rated. He had a few moves up to the Championship and League One that didn't quite work out. But but how's he been sort of taken in by by the fan base? Uh, it's, it's, a t- it's a situation where no matter what I say, there's going to be a Newport fan that disagrees with me. Right, Personally, okay. I really liked him. He had the start of the season where he did really well. Mm-hmm. And then a combination of injuries and potentially because we were 
switching up manager and losing a bit of form in the league, he lost a bit of confidence, which I kind of, you could kind of feel when he was playing games, he wouldn't go for the ball as necessarily hard as he would have been his first few. But as of recent, he's been, a, he's really found his form playing next to a, a player like Charlie McNeil or Callum Kavanagh has really worked out well for him because it's a nice balance of the two strikers. Bowles a lot more physical. Mm-hmm. He can finish a chance. McNeil or Kavanagh, they're a lot shorter. So by that, they're a lot better with a ball at their feet and they can provide kind of form into a Bogle to give him the chances that he's needed to score and the ones that he's well known to. But it's a situation where overall, I'd say he's been good. Of course, he had the very long dry patch in between scoring, but I don't think that was ever really his fault. It was a situation that the team was underperforming and he can't do everything on his own. So he's he's kind of a uh, he's a he's a poacher. He's he's definitely a that's what he's known as. He's someone that can finish chances rather than potentially creating them or doing much with the ball at his feet. But it's really been a situation of if the team's performing well, he's been performing well. There was a situation I'd like to say it was against Crawley. That was back in January. Mm-hmm. He was still in the situation of not scoring many goals and. He got subbed off for, uh, I'd like to say, Will Evans, but I'm, I'm my memory might, might be jot there. But he got cheered off, not in a positive way, like a cheered off in a he's been subbed off way. And I'm that sure. kind of caused a uh, that caused a riot and a situation where we were wondering if he was going to leave. And I believe around that time he was being linked to Gillingham. Like a few days after that game, I saw reports of apparently he'd being linked to them and whatever else. So it's been a situation of if the fans and the team are kind of behind him, he's done well, but he's in a situation now and again where the team may not be performing. And with that, he's not able to perform either. Enigma then. I'll stick to that description. Um, yeah, yeah, to be fair, it's probably a definition, um, like a definition of him. It's a pretty good one. There's a couple more players I want to talk about um, before we get on to potential lineups and that type of thing and, and systems and, and all that sort of tactical side of things. Um, Declan Drysdale is one that we had on loan a couple of seasons ago under under Steve Evans and um, play centre-back, could play defensive midfield, was was young. That's why he goes out on loan, I totally understand. That was a bit rash at times. Um, but I noticed he, he seemed to have had quite a good start to the season for Newport and then he's unfortunately missed quite a lot of football since the turn of the year. I think he picked up an injury in January and he only came back a few weeks ago. Um, but first question is, is where has Declan played for you predominantly? And, and number two, how, how is he getting on? Because obviously you always sort of notice names that you've had previously at your own club and, and always ask the question. I mean, he's been probably, bar Farkasson, our, our best offender. The issue is, like you said, he picked up an injury. And with that, we haven't seen him as much as we would have liked, but I think he's a really good player. He's been predominantly playing middle right centre back. It's kind of switched between him and Ferguson most of the time. But I'm not actually sure whether he's injured now. He picked up an injury against Mansfield, I believe it was. And I'd like to say he's back, but that I'm not 100 percent sure. No, he's did not play for a couple of games. I think it was about yeah. the 18th of April was the last time he played. So he's obviously missed the last couple because you played Saturday and you played in the week as well. Yeah, I'd like to see, he picked up an injury in that game. A load of players picked up injuries. Matt Baker was number one of them. Uh, mm-hmm. Cameron Norman was taken down with some heavy chances in that game. But irregardless, not going off the topic yet, Drysdale's been good. He's a he's very good at being a last man defender, I've noticed. He's been in situations where it's maybe been a one-on-one or two-on-one between him and two attackers. And he's done relatively well in those situations him and Dimitri were kind of the, uh, what I've noticed, kind of stay back, centre backs, and then you've mm-hmm. got a Ferguson who maybe will drift up the pitch a little bit more. But no, he's he's been good uh, just being a central defender. I haven't really noticed much with him in terms of a defensive midfielder, in terms okay. of driving the ball forward a bit more. But then again, I haven't watched every single minute of him play this season. The ones I've seen of him have been him doing solid roles as 
that central defender of just taking the ball, distributing it out to the fullbacks. But yeah, overall, he's been very solid. Interesting. The other one that you've just mentioned him as well, I wanted to talk about because I wrote an article a few weeks ago about players that we'd seen that had been very good against us that I'd like to have a look at in in the summer. And obviously, we don't know how much budget Gillingham have, have got moving into the transfer window once the season ends. But that was that was Priestley Parkinson. I thought he was brilliant against us. I think he defensively was very good. I know at the time we were shocking in front of gold, but you can only defend against what's in front of you. And he did it really well. And I, I think he scored both goals as well. Um, it's not many times that you see, you see centre half score twice in a game. So if, if you see one, you do tend to sit up and take notice. But um, 26 already, he's not a player that I sort of knew a lot about of until this season, um, but seems to have been getting rave reviews from obviously from yourself and from other Newport County fans. And I was just wondering, what's what's the contract situation there? And has he had interest from from our higher up, maybe League One as well? Or I mean, little known about interest from League One. I could only assume yes. His contract is up in the summer, so that's something that we're in a situation of worrying about because of how influential he's been at the back this season. Uh, I don't know. He's he's a player that I could see moving up to League One. Apparently, he's had very brief talks with potentially getting another contract renewal, but I'm not seeing how true that is. Apparently he wants to stay and see if we can finish higher up the table, but okay. that's that's an internet article I've read. Whether I know if that's true or not, who knows, but he's definitely going to have interest should he become a free agent in the summer. Yeah, because I was looking, obviously, you, you tend to look geographically at this level as well in terms of because you don't tend to get, like from us, you don't get people moving from high up north to come all the way down to the south to play. But I was just noticed that obviously birthplace was London. So it might be something that we could have a look at. But yeah, just just wanted to, to pick your, bone, uh, your brains in terms of, of how good he's been. And he's, he's clearly had a very good season. Um, I assume he'll be in your 11 for Saturday afternoon. But what are you thinking in terms of what the team will be come three o'clock Saturday? You mentioned that he's going to be playing. He will be, but I will mention the last time out against Harrogate, he he wasn't great. And that's probably the one game I've noticed of him that he hasn't right, okay. he's been a very consistent centre-back, but he was at fault for, like I believe, their first goal. So I've, so I've read, I've seen the highlights and whatever, and it didn't seem uh, too great from him. But in terms of lineup. The formation probably sticks at a 3-5-2. That's what we've been running all season, mm -hmm. especially under Coughlin. I, in terms of strategy or in terms of play, I'm not sure. It could it could be whatever lineup. Scott Bennett, I believe, is out for the rest of the year or the rest of the season, I should say. So yeah, he came off injured on Tuesday, didn't he? I'm just yeah, looking at your lineup with a concussion. I like to say clash of two heads. So okay. <sighs> Maybe I can't. I can't really see much of a change between the lineup we had on what Tuesday. But yeah, I forgot the day there. But yeah, I I can't see too much of a change. I could see Aaron Lewis maybe being the player to go into the midfield instead of Bennett maybe, and then you'd see maybe Charlesley go to more of a centre midfielder. Yeah, I'd like to see him maybe on the on the right. That's kind of where. I've noticed with him. Uh, no, I can't see much change. I could see Bogle's going to be one that starts. Farkas and Dimitri, who they won't change. They'll be the ones that start. Norman, there's no reason he doesn't. Mm -hmm. Will Evans, potentially on the left side as a wing back, kind of left midfielder. And then it all depends on who goes up next to Bogle, whether that's going to be McNeil or Kavanagh. I'd like to say it'd be McNeil because when he came on on Tuesday, he was he was pretty good. So a couple of options then, but you don't think it'll be wholesale changes. Um, yeah, in terms of the deals, um, we've got a few out. But we've had a couple that have been confirmed as missing for the rest of the season. Now, nothing serious, but just not going to take any chances. So we've got no Sean Williams, the captain, he won't play. Uh, ben Reeves has been out long term with a ACL. Lewis Walker did a uh, medial ligament, so he's back on the grass, but won't be fit till next season. Scott Cashkit's been out since January. 
and we've lost Aidan O'Brien. That was Easter Monday at Northampton. He looks like he's torn hamstring, so he's not going to feature again. So similar to yourself, really, Kieran, I can't see Neil Harris making loads of changes. He keeps talking about wanting to be strong and integrity of the competition and that type of thing and, and getting as many points as possible. And I think all the time that the top half finish is a possibility we'll go as strong as we can. So for me, I'd only I'd only make one change from Saturday's two all draw at Bradford. So for me, I'd I'd take Robbie McKenzie out. He just looked tired second half and it was his tired challenge that, that led to the penalty that Andy Cook tucked away. So I'd bring in David to Tonda at left back. But for me it would be the unchanged aside from that. So that'd be Glenn Morris in goal. Jay Alexander is the right back. Max Emer and Connor Masterson have been very good for us as centre back since being paired together. Start of February, I think Connor Masterson arrived last week at the transfer window. Um, midfield four slash five, I don't think will change. That'd be Alex McDonald. Ethan Coleman will play instead of Sean Williams. Timmy Dieng, who scored at the weekend. Dom Jeffries, who I think you know about briefly, was there as a kid. He's been very good this season. I think he'll probably pick up Young Player of the Year. Um, and then I think it'll be George Lapsley up of Tom Nichols, and then the bench. I don't see too much change as well on there. I just I think it'd just be Robbie McKenzie for for David to Tondra I've taken out of the team. But final question before I let you go, and it's always that the important question is is and I know you're coming to the game because we've been chatting on Twitter, so we're both looking forward to seeing it. Um, score prediction: Who's going to be smiling the most come five o'clock, or will it be that we're both still smiling and it's a draw? <laughs> Uh, it, it it's not one that I can predict out of a uh, recent form thing because it really depends on how we play. Yeah, I've seen a post match interview which I believe Joe Gunn made after the Harrogate game, saying that the uh, Newport players were I don't remember the exact terminology he said of it, but they pretty much said he pretty much said that they were all tired and getting ready for the. Uh, end of season break, especially with nothing to play for. So that gives me a bit of a a worry as to how much effort are we gonna put in mm -hmm. on Saturday. I I I'd like to say we win two one, but if I'm gonna be potentially realistic and go off of your form, go off of our form, go off of what's been said, injuries and whatever, I'll probably say two one to Gillingham so I it's one that regardless of the result I'm happy us being clear of relegation was the only thing that I was worried about so of course. yeah I'm just I couldn't care less in all honesty with the result so is it your first, so is it your first trip to Jill's or have you been before uh, this is funny enough this is actually my first away day when you bought so oh okay yeah, yeah, it's that's the main reason I'm kind of like, especially with how close it is to the end of the season, this being our last away day of the year. It's I, I don't worry. I'm, I'm just happy I'm at the games. So uh, I'm gonna say two one Gillingham, but as long as I see a score, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, I sounded like that for about the first half of the season. To be fair, if we scored a goal, it was a bonus. Um, similar reasons for yourself going off of the fact that your form's a little bit up and down. Also, what you told me, the fact that the Jill's form at home has been pretty much spot on, um, only one defeat since the turn of the year on our own patch. Um, I've written mine down. I can see that I'm going to say 3-1 to Gillingham. I think we haven't scored three in a league game to win for Christ knows how long. I think the only time we scored three in a league game this season was when we drew three all at Swindon. But I'm hoping and, and keeping everything crossed that, that, that Saturday's the day and it signs off the season for me because I won't be travelling to Salford final day with a with a comfortable win. Um, but yeah, I think same to you. It's same as you is that from where we were at the turn of the year, it's it's just nice to be looking forward to the final game with no pressure on it. Kieran, it's been a real pleasure, mate. I really appreciate your time. It's been good fun. Been good fun. Cheers. Not a problem at all. Jill's fans, like I say, I will leave Kieran's Twitter handle in the description at the bottom of the video. Go and give him a follow before and after the game. Um, do not forget that all these videos are in association with Art of Football. You know what to do. Retro hats, vintage uh, hoodies, jumpers, shirts, all the stuff. Links in the description at the bottom of the video. Go and check them out. Uh, be there Saturday. Myself, Boz, Nick, whoever else wants to come and join in for the Match Day Live. 
Um, and then, yeah, hopefully we'll be back with Reese for the Monday review, talking about another three points for the Jills as we close out our season in Skybet League 2. But until then, enjoy the rest of your week. And up the Jills.